Three-game series, bottom of the seventh, D-backs down 4-1. Matt Williams with two on, and Williams says they're not on anymore. He doesn't literally say it, but he says it with his actions. His 20th homer ties the game at four. Top of the 10th now, it's Vladimir Nunez on the hill to Ed Taubensee with a runner on, and Taubensee, the two-run homer, is seventh of the year, three for four in the ball game. That makes it 6-4 Reds, and they go on to win it by the final of 7-4, 15-4 now in their last 19 road games. Sean Casey was two for five, his NL leading average up to 378. The Diamondbacks did not come through in the clutch in this one. Larkin no score. Travis Lee grounds up the middle. Larkin ranging and throwing him out. Top of the six, tied at four. Pokey Reese ripped Ed Vosberg to right center. And it's just short of the pool. And Reese hustling around the bases, going for third. Here's the play. Here's the throw. Yikes. And away. Into the dugout. Reese going all the way around. He's awarded home. Reds go up 5-4 and win 8-7. Pokey Reese 5-4-6 on the night. Three runs in RBI. Arizona loses three straight at home for the first time this season. And the Reds, Road Warriors, in NL Best 21-10 and 10 on the road. And top of the fifth. Reds trail 5-1. One on for Sean Casey. Off Andy Bennis. Get out of town and get into the pool. Oh. A two-run shot, 15th for Casey and four hits in the ballgame. Bottom seven, Reds are up two. Scott Sullivan to Jay Bell. Bell rips one deep. Did he get it off? No. Ballpark and Jeffrey Hammonds will hold it. Great play there. Bottom of the ninth, tying run on base. Scott Williamson gets his eighth save against Jay Bell to end it. And the Reds win 9-7. Cincinnati is 16-4 and in their last 20 on the road. They're 6-0 all-time at Arizona. Sean Casey got the batting average up to 385. The Diamondbacks score five runs in the first. Red slugger Greg Vaughn said, quote, Come July, we don't know where half this team is going to be. Meaning, if the Reds aren't in the hunt, they expect to be sold for parts. That makes for a good series. First of four at the Astrodome. This makes for a good series as well. Larry Durker back at the Astrodome watching a game again only from less than two weeks after brain surgery. Meantime, Ron Vallone getting it done. Who's this guy? Ron Vallone? Who? Released by Cleveland before this season. Night of his life, Tim. Right, bottom of the third here, though. Vallone does walk a few guys tonight, including Mike Hampton, the pitcher here. He pitches it very carefully because Mike Hampton is a very good hitting pitcher. Normally, you just throw it down the middle. With this guy, you got to be careful. And here's a grounder that Vallone makes a nice play. And look at Hampton fly. He's one of the fastest pitchers I think I've ever seen. And they get the force out at second base here. Do you like Hampton? It's the little guy. Well, he's a little guy. He's a, how can you not like a guy when you're three feet tall like me? And here's a, here's a fly ball to center field. And Mike, Mike Cameron, very good center fielder. Another good acquisition in the offseason. So Vallone now. No hitter. Bottom of the six. Gets Derek Bell swinging. No hitter through six full innings, six Ks on the night for Vallone. Bottom of the seventh, bed on second for the Strohs, Tony Eusebio. Finally, base hit. Breaking it up. No hitter broken up. Vallone still a 1-0 lead, though. Seven innings, one hit, no runs given up for Vallone. That brings us to this, Harold, a very interesting play. Well, top of the eighth inning. Now, watch how quick Bagwell gets in. He calls the pitcher off and elects to go to second base. Looking for the double play. Gutierrez can't handle it. They end up with the bases loaded, no outs. Now, let's look at it again. I thought it was a great play. Just give him the, the credit for having the guts. You got the hitter, Hammond, standing at home plate. And when the ball bounces, he decides to take off. You got a triple play, really. He just made a bad throw. Easy double play. It ended up killing him tonight. But you got to love the up. Base is loaded. Next man up, Hal Morris. Grounder here. Got the force. Couldn't turn two. Run scores 2 nothing. Reds. Reds go on to beat the Astros 3 to nothing. Ron Vallone, again, the big story, gets the win. Seven innings, gives up one hit. Yeah, just H, hit, that's it. Ron Vallone retired just one batter in his last start against Milwaukee. That's on Saturday. Almost gets a no-hitter here. A Reds note, Mark Waller's thrown for double-A Chattanooga. The Chattanooga lookouts gave up three runs in two-thirds of an inning. Three walks, three wild pitches, gave up a home run. Both outs, however, if you want a bright side, were strikeouts. Meantime, the Astros shut out the last team in the majors to be shut out this season. It's very difficult to win any game with one hit, that's obvious. And we didn't swing the bats very well. We, we haven't swung the bats real well in the, in the past couple weeks. Uh, but, you know, we've got good hitters. We know they're good hitters. It's a matter of them coming out and uh, swinging the bats again and uh, putting up runs. But it's, it's frustrating. We were tired. Um, they were tired. They got in late. They just were better than we were tonight. Um, they capitalized on our mistakes and uh, got a big hit when they needed it. Well, the unexpected shot in the arm from Ron Vallone. I was uh, looking up the media guide. Ron Vallone. But where's everybody else for the Reds? 
Well, they're all going to stick around if the Reds stay in this thing. If they don't, they're going to start unloading. The amazing thing about the Reds is they are where they are, with Brett Tomko and Denny Nagel having only two wins between them. And Nagel will probably be back at the end of July. And at the end of July, I think this team is going to be adding players, not subtracting them. Well, the thing I like about Jack McKinn, you know, a lot of people want to dog Jack McKinn, but Jack's a throwback. And, and I look at the one thing he did earlier in the year with Pokey Reese. He said, he doesn't have a guaranteed job in spring training. Go out and prove it. He said, you showed me what you can do, you're going to be my second baseman. He's gone out and done that. Pokey's had the best season of his career. But I like Jack McKeon for telling it like it is because so many people will bounce around the issue and they won't tell you, this is the way it is. He told them this is how it is, and I think he does that with his whole ball club. That's why they're responding. Meantime, you have Greg Vaughn, Tim, just saying outright, hey, we could be just all sold off fire sale if we don't win, if we don't contend. That sparked these guys? You would think it would. Yeah, and they will get rid of them. Jim Bowden said that in spring training. If we're not winning, we're going to unload these guys at the end of, end of July because we don't have enough money to afford it. So it's the next month is critical for this club. All right, we're taking a break here on Baseball Tonight. The Reds' magical mystery tour continues, as does the winning. The best road team in baseball saddled up against division-leading Houston again tonight. This one was fun to watch. The Reds had a 3-1 lead. Jeff Bagwell, three-run homer, so forget that. But then Eddie Tobbins, he stepped up. A two-run double in the fifth as the Reds had reclaimed the lead 6-4. Michael Tucker, big night for Tucker. He keyed a four-run sixth inning with two more runs delivered. Tucker on the night. Holy smokes, can it be? Three hits, four RBIs, and he scored two runs. And uh, believe me, some tension is starting to loom between these two teams. 10-4 Reds. Now, Brett Tomko earned some respect from his teammates when he came inside on Derek Bell. Greg Vaughn had taken a pitch in his first at bat. Bell didn't like being on the business end of what was probably a payback. Tucker would help keep him off the boards with a great catch that showed his skills and frankly how much give there is in the outfield fence at the dome. Now watch Scott Williamson nail this one down. Two outs, hard right side grounder, off Casey's glove, pokey to Williamson, nails it down, Reds 10-7 within two of first place in the division. Elsewhere, Philadelphia, best Chicago. To you, how about them Reds? The big road machine has climbed within a game of the division leading Houston Astros. The Reds remain undefeated on the road trip, beating the Astros this afternoon 8-1. To the dome we go, and the Strohs don the 70s look with the rainbow striped jerseys. They didn't distract the Reds. Aaron Boone takes the Sean Bergman fastball out to straightaway center. Boone hustles in for one of three Reds triples and scores on a Paris ground out. One zip. Now, Paris was splendid on the mound, striking out Richard Hidalgo on a wicked cutter with the bases loaded. Paris yields one hit in five Ks. He's five and one. And then up steps Sean Casey. An absolute blast in the seventh. Deepest part of the ballpark, his 16th at 7-0. Eddie Tobbins, he adds to that with his eighth homer, punishing an off-speed pitch to right. That one's out of there. And Stan Belinda makes his comeback with a strong inning of work. Overall, a two-hitter. Reds have the best road record in baseball, beating the Astros 8-1. Here is your Reds Roundup. The Reds facing Jose Lima today. It didn't take long to get to the 11-game winner. Michael Tucker took him yard in the first, his sixth tater. One zip Reds. The Strohs tied it up Pete Harnish in the fourth. Jeff Bagwell with his 24th bomb. The only run Harnish gave up in five innings. The Reds made him a winner in the sixth. Barry Larkin breaks the tie with a two-run single to left. His batting average is up to 312. And the Reds are up to the top of the Central, completing a sweep in Houston with a 5-2 win. We just got to keep playing, you know. You know, we enjoy the win, you know. But as you see, nobody's jumping up and down. You know, it's not the World Series. We got a lot of baseball left. We've been playing well, been executing. You know, we did little things this entire series as well as the, the uh, series in Arizona before we came here. And we're going home with a 7-0 record. So, uh, you know, now we just have to continue to play well. We haven't played well at home. We just got to continue to do the small things that we've done on the road. And, uh, you know, we should be all right. So here's your standings. Read them and weep, Astros. The Reds are in first place by one one-thousandth of a percentage point. We'll take it. 1995 was the last time the Reds were in first place. The Reds wrap up a perfect 7-0 road trip with a 5-2 win over Houston. Let's go to the Astrodome where Michael Tucker bangs his solo homer in the first for a one nothing lead. Tucker goes 5 for 10 with 6 RBI during this series. Winning pitcher Pete Harnish makes just one mistake. Serves up Jeff Bagwell's 24th homer. It reaches the mezzanines, leading off the fourth inning. Greg Vaughn strikes out for the third time in the sixth, argues the call, 
gets ejected, and Vaughn gets the last word in before saying, bye-bye, I'm heading to the showers. Barry Larkin, batting well over 400 during the month of June, picks up the slack in Vaughn's absence, drives home Tucker, and Sean Casey, who, by the way, had three hits today, the Reds 3-1 to one in the sixth. Ed Taubins, he brings home Larkin, and the Reds lead 4-1. to one. They go on to win 5-2, to two, the best road team in baseball. The Reds are now in first place. We'll hear from the players and Jim Bo Bowden. Jim Bowden. I'm so excited. Jim Bowden joins us live on the Ford Dealer Sports Authority. Here for us. You know, we didn't, I don't think we expected to go in there and win all seven, but, you know, we've been playing well on the road, and, you know, we were hoping to go into Houston and win a few, and, uh, you know, we came out of there with a sweep in Arizona, and then we kept it rolling with, you know, got a sweep in Houston. That was... That was big for us. Malone pitched the game of his career, I, I think. I mean, in Houston the other day, and we came out with another tough victory. I mean, we just put, we're clicking right now. Our starting pitching was there, the bullpen. Everybody from the, the top of the lineup down to the bottom of the lineup did something in, 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 in some of the games to contribute to help win games. And I think that's the biggest thing we're having this road trip. Everybody was doing something, which, in effect, you know, we had a great road trip. Do those guys look happy or what? Hey, let's go inside the numbers. The last time the Reds were in first place, back in 1995. That's when they won the division. Last month, May 2nd, the team was 9-14. and 14. The low point of the season, five games under 500. On May 14th, at 14-18, and 18, the Reds were in last, seven games out. But, oh, have the times changed. Since May 14th, they are 27-13, and 13, now tied with Houston atop the Central Division. In fact, they lead them by one thousandth of a percentage point. Tonight, we are joined by a very happy Reds general manager. Jim Bowden is back, fresh off the plane, live in our studio. You're a quick change artist. You go home, you change, you come in. Look at that smile on your face. You've got to be excited. The team's excited. Everybody here in town's excited. Well, it was a joy, just like Christmas. <laughs> you left here last Sunday. You said, I'm looking to make trades. I want to see this team on the road. What is your perception? What is your thoughts now as you come home? Well, obviously, I think what this team proved is they can play with the big boys. I mean, we're playing teams that have 50, 70 million dollar payrolls, and except for Atlanta, we've played with every team in the league, and this was a very big week for us. Obviously, we're tied for first place, but we beat two very good clubs in Arizona and Houston, two clubs that'll be there come late September, so it's a very good sign. This is a different team on the road as opposed to Synergy Field. What did you notice about them, Jim? Well, you know, it's really amazing the high energy that this team has on the road for whatever reason. And they hit well, they pitch better, everything seems to go better, but hopefully that'll change. And, you know, baseball's filled with cycles, and I think when the team gets home, they'll start a winning home record, too. Michael Tucker, sensational on the trip. Let me see these numbers. Batting 429, 9 RBI, 2 home runs, 10 runs scored in 7 games. What a way to celebrate his birthday. Well, Michael's a good player. People don't realize, uh, you know, when he was in the Brett Boone trade, that he was a major part of that deal, along with Denny Nagel and Robbie Bell. Michael's having a great year. He's hitting close to 300. Uh, he's hit some home runs. He's a great defensive outfielder, has a lot of speed, and he's been a big plus for this ball club. Pokey producing as your leadoff hitter, batting 300, scoring 11 runs in seven games. Well, right now he's probably the gold glove winner at second base. Uh, Craig Biggio probably finishes in second place. Pokey's done a great job defensively. He leads all second basemen in fielding percentage, has done a great job leading off, can steal bases, has great enthusiasm, plays the game hard. He's been a big plus as well. We're watching Barry Larkin. He's been on fire in June. I mean, this is not the same Barry Larkin who is saying, I want to be traded, all the talk last year. Suddenly, when you're winning, everything's different, and Barry's different as well. Well, you know, beginning of spring training, Barry was very happy with the direction that we were taking, and Barry's done a great job for us. Uh, he should be the all-star. He should beat out Ray Ordonez. I don't know the final vote yet on how that played out, but the way he's played offensively and defensively, he deserves to be an all-star once again. Now, the team goes to Arizona. You do all the little things. You get the little hits. Barry playing defense, the pitching coming through. What did you notice about the trip starting in Arizona? Well, the big thing, of course, is the team effort. I mean, it's not one part of the game that's carrying us. Obviously, the middle of the lineup, whenever you have Sean Casey, Greg Vaughn, and Barry Larkin, you've got big power there. But this is a ball club that is great defensively up the middle, great speed. They throw to the right bases. Uh, this team breaks up double plays and goes into second base as hard as any team in the league. Uh, this is a team that plays together. They have great camaraderie, great makeup, great chemistry, and uh, I think it's a team that if we get enough starting pitching, should be able to compete all year long. Talking about the pitching, Valone, Paris, Tomko, Harnish, all four of them take this team deep in Houston. Well, our, our starting pitching for quite a while was getting knocked out in the first, second, third inning, so it was, it was great to be able to go in and, 
and play the team you have to you have to beat and get quality starting pitching and of course the bullpen continues to be spectacular which also helps Stan Belinda big effect on the team coming back I don't think there's any question anytime you can add a veteran relief pitcher like Stan Belinda who put up tremendous numbers for the Reds the last couple of years to watch him come in and, and pitch the Astros like he did all last year was phenomenal that'll be a big uplift all right coming home now Arizona Houston I mean we should have 35 40,000 fans out there every night this week well I don't think there's any question we need the fans to come out I mean I think one of the reasons why we don't play as well at home as we do on the road is when we go on the road we play in new stadiums in front of 35 40,000 fans every night I'm hoping now that the Reds are in first place that more fans will come to the ballpark and root this young home team on 10 games over 500 Jack McKeon gives up the cigars at least for a day right well we're gonna find out tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, 6 to 9, I'm going to be on WLW Radio with Jack McKeon and John Allen, and hopefully, hopefully he will not be smoking that cigar because my clothes can't take it anymore. <laughs> Call Jim tomorrow night. Congratulations. Hey, thanks. Great everybody. to talk to you, especially tonight being in first place. It's been place. a fun week. Thank you, Jim. Tonight, however, there is one sad note in the Reds family. Former Reds pitcher Tim Liana died in a car crash in California today. He was part of the Nasty Boys bullpen back in 1990, the year the Reds won the World Series. Tim Liana. Besides, the Reds haven't seemed to need much guidance lately anyway. They just concluded a 7-0 road trip against two first-place teams, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. It was just the third 7-0 road trip turned in by Cincinnati in 52 years. Another number to throw into the mix, payroll. This is a most economical success story told now by Jack Edwards in tonight's breakdown. If you see red in your home park these days, you're seeing trouble. They came here, you know, with one thing in mind, trying to... Uh, I mean, in proof of point, they did. You know, they came in and gave us a good old butt whooping. And, you know, there's not much more to say. They, they beat us in every as aspect of, of, of the game. In four games, Houston never got the tying run to the plate in the eighth or ninth innings. The Reds have won a major league leading 26 away games, 21 of their last 25. I don't think you can get any hotter. If you actually sat back and watched the series, it seemed like they had about 11 or 12 guys out there. I mean, it was always, you know. I had a guy right there. Maybe not that number, but Cincinnati has made the most of many. Seven pitchers have started four or more games for the Reds. They've given us a chance to, to stay in the ball game. And, and uh, you know, recently they've just been shutting teams down. But if you get that kept up with some good defense and some timely hitting and things like this, you know, this series sweep's going to happen for you. For example, 29-year-old lefty Ron Vallone pitching for his fifth club in the last five seasons, but getting his first chance to start. In Thursday's opener of the Houston series, Ballone hurled seven shutout innings. Danny Graves came on to save his tenth. His previous career high was eight saves in a season. Graves and Scott Williamson have given Cincinnati's bullpen more saves than any other in the NL. Saturday's starter was a guy who never has pitched more than 99 innings in a major league season. Steve Paris allowed just one hit in seven frames. Paris, Ballone, Graves, Williamson? Not exactly high-priced talent, just playing that way. Of contending teams, the Reds are providing by far the biggest bang for the buck. Their payroll draws 52% less salary than Cleveland's, 61% less than the Yankees. Bigger money doesn't mean better performance. Greg Vaughn's salary takes up 17% of the Reds' payroll, and he's hitting just 215. But nobody's pointing fingers. There is a positive attitude of players picking each other up. The same dynamic that has shielded Vaughn from criticism just one summer after he hit 50 homers is the dynamic that lets Cincinnati ignore low preseason expectations. The main thing we have going for us is that everybody in this clubhouse believes we can win, and that's what it's all about. As long as you believe you can win, it doesn't matter what anyone else says or, or does or writes, you know, because it, it has no effect over us. You know, we, we can't control those things, but as long as, it, as a group we feel we can win, the sky's the limit. A month and a half ago, they were in last place. Since then, the Reds have played 678 ball to get into the chase. They have come back to win 19 times this season, thrice on the just completed 7 0 swing that ended in Houston. I don't think any of us thought we'd come into Arizona and take three and sweep them and then come into Houston and sweep four. So uh, we did it though, which is, which is good, and we'll take that. Well, certainly has been good, and welcome everybody with uh, Peter Gammons here. Baseball tonight starts at midnight Eastern for a full hour, so we'll uh, get our fill of baseball in just a bit. But let's talk about the Reds and also the Padres. Start with Cincinnati. Here they come off this great road trip. They have to go home where they haven't had a great deal of success against the very same teams. 
How about the Cincinnati Reds? The fact that they've been able to do this, how are they doing it? Well, they're doing, you know, what's interesting, they got good starting pitching on this trip, but they need Denny Nagel back at the end of July, and that Jim Bowden is trying everywhere to make a deal for, for another starting pitcher, because they have the great bullpen. But I think what everybody now knows about this team is this is one of the best defensive teams in the National League, very important on our turf, and you start with Pokey Reese, the second base. He is... Unquestionably, the best defensive second baseman in the National League. Spectacular at times, but also very consistent. Great baseball player, you know, very consistent guy. The shortstop is the best shortstop in the National League. It has been for a long time, Barry Larkin. And I think, you know, one of the surprises, they made the deal when they went out and got Mike Cameron in center field. I don't know what they really expected, but Cameron has played very well. Michael Tucker has played brilliantly That's in it. right field. So they've really had a very good defense. I mean, wait, listen, with Casey, with Larkin, and with Vaughn, they got three guys on, on, uh, on track knocking 100 runs. Pete Harnish uh, pitch lasted five innings the other day. They're still con the only concern really with their pitching staff is his arm and whether it's going to be okay. But you brought up Jim Bowden and the fact that instead of having some fire sale, he's actually talking about adding a pitcher, which has to be the best news of all. Well, absolutely. I mean, this team now, they're at the point where, and why not bring the excitement of baseball back into Cincinnati? They're going to have a new ballpark in two or three years, but I think it all started with that Greg Vaughn deal, and Vaughn has carried that winning attitude mm -hmm. over. You have to, along with Larkin, but I think that that city, which is one of the great baseball towns in America, is rediscovering how much fun it is to be a Reds fan again. All right, obviously they have this huge series coming up, two series against Arizona and Houston. There's going to be a meeting between John Allen and Jim Bowden. Is this sort of a make-or-break week based on what happened last week, or, or are they full steam ahead? No, I think they're full steam ahead now. I don't think there's any chance now that un unless they were to lose about eight or ten in a row, maybe they would move Greg Vaughn at the end of July. But right now, they really believe they have a great shot, maybe not at beating Houston, but making it into the wild card. I mean, it's an amazing thing, but there are only three teams, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Cincinnati, in right. the National League, under $50 million payrolls with winning records.